This is Ryan Corker with Broadcast Buddy TV, the all-around go-to channel for all things broadcast television. And on this channel, it is our goal to equip you with the tips, tricks, and know-hows to help make you a better broadcaster. And here we are, back at it again, high school basketball broadcasting. And uh, very similar to uh, the first video I did on this a couple seasons ago, um, it's a little different right now because I'm not actually working the game. Um, I'm here just uh, to uh, shoot a video for you guys and kind of show you some of the updates we've made to our setup and uh, kind of what we're doing now and uh, how we've kind of downsized this production a little bit based on budgetary purposes and uh, things like that. But um, yeah, I'm just here along for the ride and I will warn you that most of the camera shots are gonna be done from uh, me behind the camera because Brandon, the uh, gentleman who usually comes out and shoots these for me while I'm working, uh, had his own baby. So yeah, he's, uh, he's at home doing the, the fatherly thing. So it's just, you, me, and uh, occasionally one of my uh, esteemed crew guys holding the camera for me. And I forgot a tripod. Of all the things to forget, I forgot a tripod. So everything's gonna be handheld for this. Anyways, um, I'm gonna take you around. I'm gonna show you the inside and I'm gonna take you to the truck, which is not the same truck we used last time. It is actually uh, kind of a proof of concept truck that I'm working on. And uh, it's got some really cool things. and. Uh, it's definitely a small footprint, so I'm excited to show you that. So let's go take a look at the, uh, the press box set up behind me. So we're gonna start this journey here at the press box and uh, it should look pretty similar to uh, what we did last year. We'll talk a little bit about it, but one of the major differences between this and previous seasons and kind of how we downsize this um, is we're still using the same cameras, the JVC HM890s, but we have taken off the fiber transceivers, the SMPT fiber transceivers that run to a CCU in the truck. So why do we do that? Well, one is that Essentially, the amount of extra work it was taking to do the home runs, especially in these complicated gym scenarios um, in high schools and things like that, added to the, uh, the labor and what we were essentially doing and what we were being paid to do this particular job for. So we looked at ways to downsize and streamline and make the entire setup easier. So part of that now is that the four cameras that we're gonna go look at um, essentially have one HDSDI line running to the press box. And in here, very similar, I've showcased this uh, technology before, but this is a uh, frequency division multiplexer um, for um, single mode fiber. It is a bi-directional um, HDSDI with network in it. So um, it will essentially take, uh, what is it? Six one way to the other, and then also two gigabit network ports. So, um, it's been really great and essentially what this allows us to do is take all of the cable runs that we had before down to a single single mode fiber run now we have uh, a bundle here of tac fiber but um, it's literally one one line that's carrying all of that camera traffic data traffic and everything like that so um, huge uh, a uh, way to streamline all of that to make things easier. And again, um, just the HDSCI runs that are going straight to the cameras. Now, with that, there are some trade-offs. For example, because we are not carrying all that camera control information, we lose out on things like tally. We lose on things like intercom, um, camera control. All that stuff you know, has to now be done in a different way. Tally, there are systems out there that you can you know, integrate like a wireless tally or something of that nature, but we didn't really want to get into that. Um, so always act like you're on. Um, as far as camera control, everything in a gymnasium is pretty well, um, pretty well lit, and it's very rare that you're gonna get too radical of light changes. So we've been running all the cameras in auto for the season. It's done pretty well. Um, now the JVCs uh, uniquely have a way that we can actually do remote camera control and that's through a network GUI. So we didn't get enough time really to experiment with that, but 
I know through a single controller or through the web GUI, if the camera is on the network, you can get in and do camera control that way. So um, I've actually gotten wireless adapters for the cameras and my goal was to put up a wireless access point so that all the cameras could talk to that and we could still have camera control um, remotely in the truck. But, you know, it ran out of time before the season to really tinker with that. But in any case, auto has been working very well. Um, now when it comes to uh, intercom, we went the way of wireless. So we have our RTS wireless transceiver here and uh, everybody's wireless. So all four cameras have a wireless belt pack and our stats guy has a wireless belt pack. And uh, yeah, it's been working really great, especially in this size of an arena. We haven't had any trouble and we've never had trouble with the RTS uh, stuff, to be honest. So um, yeah, it's been really good. And it all gets back to the Odin frame that is in the uh, truck, which we'll show you in a bit. Um, so that's mostly the major changes in here. Again, um, everything else in the press box is pretty much the same. Um, we'll cut the camera, we'll walk around so we don't make you sick with the, uh, the motion of the camera getting up there, but let's go take a look at the, uh, the actual setup. So like in previous seasons, we have our press box and uh, really nothing has changed here. Um, we still have the THS4 cough boxes. Um, and uh, again, it's uh, effectively three controls for your talent. They can turn their mic on and off they can talk back to uh, the director producer and they can hold down like a push to mute in case they have to have a quick conversation or a cough so that they don't accidentally leave their mic um, depressed or off. Um, program monitor with the return for program so they can see what's going on um, for the actual broadcast. Um, we do have a third position set up for um, a guest, which is another headset. The guest is typically at the end of the, uh, of the game they will wrangle the winning coach, sit him here and ask him a few questions and uh, things like that. And the uh, camera that usually picks up this shot is gonna be one of the uh, wireless, or one of the basket cameras, I should say. Um, so typically the wireless, because it's not tethered, it could just run over here and uh, you know the latency is great, um, lip sync is fine. So um, it does really good with that. Uh, the press box itself hasn't changed at all physically. Um, it's literally the one that uh, we used in previous seasons for uh, the other production truck. So, um, and that is because ABUs, the audio breakout modules, are the same that connect to the Ross Graphite. So they could be used in both cases. So on the other side, um, very similar to what we've done in previous seasons is we have our tower, which has some you know other gear on it. Uh, specifically our confidence camera for the scoreboard in case you know we lose data from our um, scrolling plus on the other side. Um, and yeah, that's a good point. It is actually on the other side, which is why we have this ubiquity link um, linking over there to extend our, uh, our truck network, our production network to the other side. Um, that allows us to just simply not have to run a cable, uh, you know, ethernet cable the whole way around the gym just to get to the scoreboard controller over there. Um, it's worked out very well for us, especially because of how short of a link is. We've really not had any trouble with it and it's just data. Um, and then on top we have our uh, wireless microphone receiver. Um, again, has been great. Um, this thing has been pretty rock solid, um, great latency. It is a, uh, it's a ghost eye and it's advertised for I believe a thousand meters um, line of sight, um, you know, good connectivity. And uh, we haven't really had any, uh, I mean, there's always gonna be a little breakup, but you know, if it ever got too bad um, because of how easy the run is, I mean, you could see it over there is the uh, the wireless setup. So we could always just run a cable, you know, it's it's not bad. But again, one of those um, things that, you know, even from the beginning helped with the uh, uh, complexity of the setup and streamlining it to, to make it so, you know, we feel that we're kind of in the realm of what the budgetary limitations are for this type of a broadcast and this type of a project for high school. So on the other side of the ubiquity link, we have, of course, our uh, ScoreLink Plus, which is harvesting the data from the scoreboard controller. And uh, this is the third generation now of this that we have had. We started with the, uh, the ScoreBot, then the ScoreHub, and now the ScoreLink. It's just really has been a great system for us. Um, we, in high school sports, um, usually come across an array of different scoreboards and uh, just having the utility to be able to interface with 
almost every single one we've come across, uh, 90% of them I would say, uh, has just been really, really useful. And again, being able to take that data and uh, into our expression, our ROS expression, and uh, you know, have a very clean looking graphic. Okay, so uh, just looking around uh, our other cameras. So up here we have two typically um, up in the bleachers. And what we try to do, it's, it's sometimes works out that way, but we try to be on the side that the logo is facing. It, I just think it makes for cleaner television. Um, and then uh, as far as camera placement, um, very similar to, or if not identical to uh, previous seasons, um, we'll have one up here that is going to be um, our dead center and then we're gonna have one over here that's gonna act like a little bit of a slash. It's not like a true slash where it would be down here, but it does give you uh, more of a, a good spot for high and tight. Um, so, you know, generally the camera assignments is, you know, your one up here is gonna be mostly your game cam. It's gonna follow, you know, play action. And then your high and tight will usually follow the ball and, uh, you know, usually linger on somebody who makes a shot and, uh, you know, which we would call, uh, you know, in the truck a hero. Um, so that's usually that camera assignment. And then of course, in between things, you know, we're picking up crowd, we're picking up um, really anything um, to help kind of fill the, fill the gaps. Sometimes it's gonna be uh, the players, sometimes it's gonna be the huddles or the coaches or things like that. So just to kind of show you the perspective of this camera. So right now we're at the uh, game cam, which is uh, top of the bleachers dead in center. So um, this is again kind of your uh, the shot that you're going to live on for the majority of the uh, game action. Now, would I like to be higher? Yes, um, but most of the arenas that we end up coming in do give us a lot more height than this. This is probably one of the uh, the lower lower one of the lowest shots we've had uh, all season, but. Uh, it's going to be generally that back and forth and uh, again you know maybe a little tighter framing as you kind of follow the action so yeah I, I would like to be higher but here we are so now this perspective here that we're looking at is going to be again our high and tight so typically at any given point we're going to be kind of uh, obviously my uh, my camera lens isn't as tight as the uh, broadcast lens but yeah, they're going to be following game action as closely as possible and uh, typically, you know, following the ball, the shots and everything like that it gives us a nice clean thing to cut away from, you know, after a point attempt or uh, something like that or somebody who is uh, throwing the ball in over on the sideline um, from, uh, from that or, you know, picking up a free throw as well from the side if we're not picking it up off the, uh, the basket cam. So although not always necessary. Um, we shoot with two basket cams that uh, we will typically put here on a chair and uh, handhelds. So give you a little perspective here. This is the shot we're getting and uh, they'll probably be a little closer once game time comes, but this allows our guys to kind of come up with the ball shot and also get some really good sideline views as well. So uh, the wheels on the chair just help give them some mobility, especially for getting out of the way. And uh, I wouldn't say any, <laughs> I don't know that they actually do any trucking shots, you know, on the wheels, but uh, I've also seen in a lot of cases, uh, a lot of people will just kind of have their camera guys down here on the floor sitting or kneeling, um, which certainly gives you that option where you can kind of come down here and get even more of a low dynamic shot for your uh, free throws and for your layups and all those kind of things. So um, yeah, one of, one of them is wireless and uh, the other one is wired. Um, again, in a scenario like this, because we're just going back to the press box for the uh, HDSDI run, it's not a huge deal if we had to run another line to this for whatever reason, there was a lot of wireless interference or you know, the link went down or something like that. All right, guys, here it is. Here's the inside of 
the trailer. And uh, yeah, it's, you're not gonna see a whole lot of difference between when it was uh, just an auxiliary part of Hermes, our other unit. Um, so we have expression down there and still the three play, that hasn't changed. But to the untrained eye, that's more than an expression. That's actually another Ross Graphite, similar to what we have in Icarus. And uh, what you're gonna see back here, you gotta excuse my uh, lack of a tele or, uh, wide angle lens, but this is the helm. This is, uh, this is where the director TD slash producer sits for this. And uh, it is Ross view control and dashboard with um, the Rave audio mixer. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what you guys know about view control, but this is uh, this is a cool interface on how to uh, set up and switch your show. So instead of using a traditional switcher panel, everything's done through a touch screen. So for example, if I select preview and then my camera, it's going to put that source in preview and then I can transition to it and if I want a hot punch, I can select this here and I can select my sources this way and it's gonna change what's in program. Now, aside from that, you have things like your uh, key toggles so you can turn your keys on and off. You have spaces for custom control macros, different pages and things like that. And I'm gonna be honest, I've been wanting to set something like this up for a long time. And uh, yeah, just because I, always loved the idea and uh, how cool it would be to switch a show on a touch screen and uh, over here very similarly this is also a touch screen so we can actually reach over here and adjust the faders so like I said this is this is a very special individual who has to sit here in this case for these shows it's Dan but he is director technical director audio with a degree of automation audio uh, follow video um, producing kind of splitting that load with uh, the graphics operator and uh, also talking to master control so um, it is definitely a very small footprint as you can see there's only three positions in here um, but because of how the uh, Ross systems talk together we're able to do a lot of automation and trim down the crew again for you know the budgetary purposes to kind of meet where we're at with that um, down here, we also have a little Stream Deck running, um, which is firing audio custom controls. So there's a Stream Deck plugin running for the uh, Graphite Switcher as well. And uh, honestly, what I would like to see eventually is maybe replace the three play with uh, the Simply Live. Um, I've talked about it before. I've showed in other videos. Um, it's also a touchscreen interface. I would, I, I just have this like vision of having a uh, production unit that's like completely touch you know like starship enterprise level and you know um you know there's not a lot of sources up right now but i'll, I'll come in here and i'll shoot some b-roll then of uh you know everybody in the production but yeah this this is where we're at now so the expression the three play the graphite and everything fits in the the little rack down there which i can move the chair so you can see that. So yeah, everything's in there. UPS, you got the graphite, you got a little record deck, which is a, a black magic, some fans, the three play network switch, and uh, an amp for the audio in the truck. And then uh, the Odin frame right on top. Um, and yeah, everybody gets their own um, key panel as well, as well as the, uh, the director slash TD slash producer slash audio slash yeah it's it's a lot um, and just to see kind of in the back row we have uh, our radios some chargers with the uh, the batteries a little heating unit a um, little board for notes and such and things like that but uh, yeah this this has definitely been a game changer like I said it was a kind of a proof of concept and it has all worked very well um, We've had really no issues with responsiveness with this. Um, and, you know, it's, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. But yeah, um, and again, everything going into the stadium is over that single line, that single mode fiber. 
So all the video feeds, um, the network for the wireless intercom and everything. So I was uh, explaining earlier the uh, multi hats you're wearing. So uh, why, why, don't you, why don't you give my viewers a little bit of a rundown of kind of all of your responsibilities? Um, well, I'm the director, I'm the technical director, I'm the producer, I'm the uh, audio operator, um, uh, I'm the engineer, uh, that's about it. That's about it? I think so. Master control, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I mean by producer. Oh, okay, okay. Master. Coordinating yeah. elements and things like that. Yeah. So how do, how do we feel this uh, whole setup is gone as kind of a uh, proof of concept? Touch screen is really cool. I like that I can go womp, 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 very easy switching. Um, it's a lot more convenient than I thought it would be. I, I was worried about the soft panel aspect of it, but it has not failed me at all. So that's worked really well, especially having custom controls that I can customize on here. The, like I can just queue up my clips very easily and just roll them. I can take in my score bug in the lower corner if I want to and take it off very easily. Very easy stuff, run my replay wipes. And then I can very easily also just like uh, configure my keyers very quickly if I, if I want to reconfigure something. It's very easy to work with. Um, I've got everything that I need right here. And uh, I've got my clock so I can easily see, you know, what time I have left. Uh, everything's on two monitors and it's just very, very convenient to work with. Um, Talk a little bit about uh, how we automated some of the audio. So you're not, you know, completely octopus man. Yeah, so bad. luckily, uh, instead of having to, you know, push multiple faders at the same time, uh, in the same way yeah, that a lot of mixers that. have like scene recalls that you can run, uh, we have switcher custom controls and those are still embedded in the switcher uh, software. So the same way you can run a custom control for the switcher is also running for the audio side, the Rave audio mixer in engine in the, in the switcher. Yeah, we actually also have right there a uh, stream deck and those are triggering custom controls over Ross talk to tell the switcher, hey, I need these faders up to this level. I need these faders down to this level and so on. Um, and we can do multiple you know, faders at once. So that streamlines a lot of stuff for me because I'm usually sitting here like, if I have to babysit each one, like I don't have time for it. So if I'm coming back from a break, I don't have time to push each nat fader up and each talent fader up. I just have one custom control that does all of that. So it's much easier to work with. How about some of the audio follow video stuff? Oh yeah, so that actually doesn't even require a custom control, which is really nice. Um, for example, you saw me run some replay custom controls here. If I run replay X, it automatically pushed up clips one in the audio mixer. So if I run it again, you can see it pushes it up and then right back down. So it's a much, it's a much more convenient way of, uh, of running things and I don't have to babysit audio. And that's the same case on all of our other trucks as well. Our audio op doesn't have to worry about making sure the, that fader is up for running replay wipes. It automatically triggers it for them. Now you're running uh, some companion in here as well. Yes, actually, um, I only have to really run it for one thing. I have a Blackmagic Media um, record deck. Record deck, yeah. Um, so if I go into my browser here, it's not full screen, but I, I created these buttons to start and stop the recording on the record deck. I don't know if you'll be able to get a picture of it from here, but I can very easily just press those buttons and it will uh, it'll start or stop the record from here. Uh, that way I don't have to tell the replay op, hey, can you bend over and hit the, hit the record button uh, since he's mo the one most accessible to it. I can easily just sit here and hit the button. And uh, yeah, for those who don't know, Companion is a uh, kind of a third party app open source that uh, is basically the broadcast um, uh, Swiss Army knife. Um, it's made by BitFocus and uh, is, you start a little server and you can basically make things talk to other things. So for example, you can like make, uh, it, it's got a huge array of uh, products that it talks to and manufacturers like uh, 
you know, Aja, Ross, Black Magic, um, Yamaha. So it's like, uh, it's a really, really interesting tool that allows you to uh, make things talk to things that you wouldn't normally um, think could talk. And it all functions um, basically on a Stream Deck type uh, interface, whether it's a virtual panel or actually hijacks a physical Stream Deck. So really cool stuff. Yep, pretty handy. I, I enjoy it and I was actually very surprised at all the products that I could connect to as well. I swear to God, this isn't like a... Uh, a um, Hashtag not sponsored. It's, it's not a bit, um, but uh, we're just very impressed by it and it's really cool that, you know, bird dogs, uh, Allen Heath mixers, Behringers, like it can talk to so many things. It's, it's very, very versatile. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, play. Excellent. It's done. Welcome to AHS High School Hoops on 22 The Point, the new home of the CW. Swin Cash Court inside Mimi Campbell Gymnasium. It's AHN High School Hoops on 22 the point, the new home of the CW. Tonight, the 5A Section 3 title is on the line. The number one and undefeated Oakland Catholic Eagles travel to take on the second ranked McKeesport Tigers. Hi again, everybody, alongside former Pitt basketball star, the X Man, Carl Krauser. I'm Darren Zazzle. We're so glad to have you along. CK, it's all on the line tonight. If Oakland Catholic wins, they win the 5A Section 3 crown outright and will clinch an undefeated when we come back from this break, we're not break right now, but when we come back, I'm going to come back to a shot that you have just like that. Um, and then we're going to go into the uh, starting lineups. Three, or, three and four are going to get those. 45 left in the um, so, uh, which one's closer for three and four? Home or away? The Geesport Tigers one game behind the Eagles at 18 and 2 overall, 10 and 1 in 5A section 3. That's fine. 30, 30 left, Master. Leading the team with 16 points. Well, Miss Priest is a bucket. We call our bucket leg. She does everything great. Stay tuned and get ready for a great game. When we come back, we'll bring you your AHN Sports Medicine starting lineups and the opening tip off is we number one over. All right, Master. Counting you out. I'm going to give you five, four, three, two, one. There you go, Master. Ready the and bug on. Alright, we are in game. Good work, everybody. Three, two, take two. Whistle blows and a foul. Thirty one. Take one. D'Angelo, her sister. Is Alyssa D'Angelo, senior basketball player at Division II good Fairmont stuff, State, who's 11th in the nation in scoring with 20 points per game. CK scoring runs in the D'Angelo family. Yeah, that's a bucket that family. They're ready for pocket. Do we want to do that? the rock. Let's shoot it. Yeah, one, one. Uh, Give, uh, give it a little more, uh, a little more room at the bottom. Good, go for it. Good stuff. That's perfect one. Thank you. This is just a temporary thing, one. It's just for a graphic. I got to lose it. Ready to take two. Ready one. Take one. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, we'll keep this uh, short, just because I know this video is probably going to be long as it is. But anyways. Thank you again, and we'll catch you right here next time on Broadcast Buddy TV.